In this video, we're going to look at the creative works by an Austrian artist called Friedensreich Hunderswasser. He was born in 1928 and he died in the year 2000, so 21 years ago, but he left behind a lifetime's worth of creativity that we can enjoy. Hunderswasser was passionate about art and passionate about nature. He spent his whole life trying to teach the world that if you respect nature and allow yourself to live in harmony with the landscape, then nature will reward you with a sense of well-being. He believed that art should reveal nature in all its beauty. His artworks are beautiful and very decorative. There are two themes in his paintings themes that he repeats over and over again. The first theme is nature. So he often paints trees and water and vegetation. And his second theme was where or how humans live. So he painted houses with windows, doors, fences, gables. And his paintings often have those two themes alongside each other. Hundesfasser was fascinated with spirals in nature. He used them in his paintings a lot. He loved to use spirals because he thought that they were a symbol for life, like a pathway we all journey on as we move through life. He even designed a spiral building. Hunderswasser worked with architects to design buildings, buildings that seemed to come out of fairy tales. His buildings were like stepping into an adventure. They are full of hope and optimism. They're brightly coloured, just like his paintings, and highly decorative. Hundertwasser didn't like using straight lines, neither in his paintings nor in his buildings, so architects had to disguise them. Hundertwasser thought that straight lines didn't exist in nature, so they shouldn't exist in art either. Why don't you try drawing some spirals in any material you like? You can use pen or pencil, crayons or felt tips. You can make big spirals, small spirals. You can paint spirals. You can start in the middle and slowly work yourself out using one big curvy line. Or you could do a painting in the style of Hundervasa using the two themes that he used nature and natural landscape and places where people live, work and have fun. So for this painting activity you're going to need some good quality paper, a heavier paper than the paper you would use in a printer. You're going to need a pencil, some watercolour paints and some oil pastels. Here we are, I've got white and black. If you don't have oil pastels, then you can use wax crayons. And if you don't have wax crayons, then you can use markers. Make sure that the markers have permanent written on them because they won't then dilute when you put watercolour on top. 
If you don't have watercolours, then you can go to your kitchen cupboards and see if you have any food colouring, which you can dilute with a little bit of water and put it in a container, I'll put it in a yoghurt container. And if you have, um, use what you have, but I have blue, red and yellow. So if I mix the blue and the yellow together, I'll get green. And if I mix the yellow with the red together, I'll get an orange. And the red and the blue will make a lovely purple colour. You'll also need some clean water and a brush. Hundervasa didn't ever plan his drawings. He'd lay out his canvas in front of him and work as spontaneously as he could. He felt that children did this. In fact, he admired children's approach to drawing because it was so immediate. I'm going to draw my paper in a landscape position and I've got a pencil. I'm not going to press too hard with the pencil because I want a very faint line but I am going to draw the landscape first. My houses are rectangular and I'm holding my pencil at the very end so to avoid any straight lines. I'm drawing the roofs now, not ordinary roofs of course, but roofs which might come from nature. Tall ones, round ones, wobbly ones, cloud shaped roofs. And my windows and doors are going to be unusual too. Oval shaped, round shaped, anything to avoid the straight line. I have a tree made of spirals. And a sea made of waves and curves. I'm going to use a rubber to rub out lines where objects overlap. And now I'm using the oil pastel, the black oil pastel. I'm pressing down quite hard, I'm putting quite a lot of pressure and I'm tracing over the pencil line that I've made. I have to press down quite hard with the oil pastel because I want the watercolour to resist the oil on the paper. So if I have a light touch and don't press down too hard, the watercolour won't resist the line. Now with the white oil pastel, I'm going to draw next to the black line and add detail and texture. Time to add some bold, bright colours now. I've mixed some water into the palettes, into the paint pans, and I'm using watercolour to go over the lines. And you'll see that the paint resists the oil pastel line I've actually speeded up this video, so I'm not actually as painting as fast as it looks like I am. So you take time with yours too. I'm not mixing my colours in the palette. Instead, I'm mixing my colours on the paper. So I've just laid green down and now I'm laying blue on top and now I'm mixing it on the surface of the paper. If you do that you get a really watery um, effect and the colours blend together really beautifully. I really love the way the oil pastel comes through the watery paint. Thank you. 
So I wanted to see what would happen if I used felt tips instead of watercolour and oil pastels. And I really like the way that when you overlap the felt tips, you get these lines that really lend themselves to Hundervas's style. So if you don't have watercolours and oil pastels, felt tips are a fabulous alternative. to design your own building so that it was in harmony with nature, up against nature, rubbing shoulders with nature, where would it be? Would it be in a forest, surrounded by trees and wildlife, be in the sea, underwater, with sea life and sea plants all around you? It's, it's next to a river or in a river. Perhaps you've got a stream flowing through your kitchen. Hundervas's buildings were beautiful. Colourful, bold, using organic shapes, no straight lines. It's time for you to design your own building now. I'd like you to think about where you would place a building. Maybe not for you, maybe for a community. What would those buildings be? Would they be schools, hospitals, homes? If so, what would they look like? I found some images on the web, children's artwork that are inspired by Hundervas's paintings. You can see the curvy lines, the spirals, the bold, bright colours. But they've also paid close attention to the landscape and how the buildings are integrated with the landscape. Hundervas's paintings are full of optimism, of fantasy and fairy tale, of goodness, of happy endings, curvy lines, bold colours, strong shapes. These are places where wishes come true. These are places where you would like to go. This is an opportunity for you to really enjoy a fantasy world in your imagination. Lay it all out on paper. Share it with your family and friends and don't forget to share it with me. Please send me your photographs of your finished work to my email address. I really look forward to hearing from you.